Welcome back to Racing Rundown. On this video, we're going to be doing our Power 5 for the 2020 Kentucky Derby. Now that we have concluded the 100-point prep races, there is still one more Derby prep out there, the Lexington Stakes. Uh, if you listen to this week's episode of Racing Rundown, episode number 154, a link to that will be below in the description. Uh, you can get our thoughts on that race. But uh, for the most part, the, the big action on the Kentucky Derby Trail is over. And that leads us into having to get into the... Top five right now going into the Kentucky Derby. Now, this isn't necessarily our personal opinions, but just l taking personal thoughts plus, you know, how the horses ran in their their respective starts into account and where we think they are going into the Kentucky Derby. Uh, we're going to start off with number five and go up through number one. And number five is going to be White Abario. And White Abario is a horse that I've been thinking about him this entire week, and I, I can just see it happening not just from me, but from everybody Derby Week with this guy. Just underrating him because of his last couple of starts. And his last couple of starts were very good, but the big thing with them is that they were kind of benefited by other things that happened in, in the races. Looking at the Holy Bull simplification, stumbled at the start, bad break, all that stuff, and then Mo Donegal uh, was coming out of the Remsen going a mile and an eighth and trying to go a mile and a sixteenth at Gulfstream. Uh, and was also first start as a three-year-old for Fletcher, which is an angle that doesn't usually work out very well. So White Abario was kind of, in my opinion, a victor by circumstances in the Holy Bowl, but I don't want to phrase it that way because he was a he was still a very good winner of that race. And I kind of just looked at, and I know because I did this going into the Florida Derby, that I viewed White Abario as he was just kind of the winner by circumstances in the Holy Bowl. He's a good horse, but simplification and all and simplification and classic causeway and charge it. They're better than him. And I was wrong about that. White Abario ran the better race in, in, in the Florida Derby and the Florida Derby though, is kind of also getting that, that talk because a lot of people really like charge it charge. It's the wise guy horse of this Derby. We'll obviously get more into charge it when we get to our Kentucky Derby profiles, but charge it was green as a billiard table, uh, Shout out to Michael Rona for that uh, analysis there. But he was all over the place down the stretch. Couldn't run in a straight line. And I saw the take out there that charge it. Uh, if he runs a straight line, he wins the Florida Derby, which I'm not necessarily going to disagree with that. But uh, the point being is that White Barrio, there's two stakes wins on the Derby trail, have kind of been benefited by circumstances, but he's also a really good horse. And that is the thing that makes him very difficult to read going into the Derby. And he's one that I can't ignore going, you know, me personally, I, I've been telling myself, do not ignore White Abario, because if you ignore White Abario, you will regret it when he runs a huge race in the Kentucky Derby. Looking at his other form, he's coming out of the most productive two-year-old race, the Kentucky Jockey Club. That race has thrown four stakes winners from it. Uh, Smile Happy, Classic Causeway, obviously White Abario, and then Call Me Midnight. So the form of that's really good. And then aside from that, he was undefeated. You know, aside from that race, he's undefeated. And if you like Smile Happy a lot, we almost included Smile Happy over White Abario. If you like Smile Happy... Losing to Smile Happy isn't a, a terrible thing for White Abario. So a horse that be very careful to underrate him because you underrate him, then the Florida Derby could end up happening. But I, I can't put him higher than five because the the circumstance the, the circumstantial benefits for him can't be ignored and, and they are certainly there. And moving on to number four, it'll be Taba, of course, for Amr Zidane, who one he crossed the wire first in last year's Kentucky Derby. Mike Smith, the rider, a couple Derby wins under his belt in the Triple Crown, and Tim Yachtin, who's been a part of Derby wins before as a Bob Baffert assistant, and now clearly can. can uh, we'll see how it, how it operates. The most interesting thing with Taiba will Taiba will be leading up to the Derby how he's trained because Yachtin did not have him for a lot of time into the Santa Anita Derby. He's going to have a whole month now. So one thing to think about, but I'm sure your talent will backtrack now. To his win in the Santa Anita Derby, excellent stalking trip, great ride by Mike Smith to take advantage of Forbidden Kingdom and Messier, the two favorites, going out and setting the pace. And then Taba just kind of rolled on the outside, picked them all up, and, and put them down in a good kind of dueled in the stretch, which you like to see good battle battle tactic there. However, there's a lot of inexperience. He's going to be trying to overcome a lot of historical elements in the Kentucky Derby. So the reason we have to include him is his win was impressive, and there's talent. The reason we can't put him any higher, uh, whereas if this was a more experienced horse, he could be two or one, I, I think. But just because he only has two starts, and this will be 
all of a sudden he'll go from breaking his maiden in March to maybe winning the Kentucky Derby in May. It's never happened before. I don't even know if there's been a horse that's even ran in the Kentucky Derby, making their first start in March and then running in May. And if there is one, it's one or two at most. Think things you have to balance as we approach the Kentucky Derby on pure talent. It's all there. How will he handle a 20 horse field and maybe not getting the ideal trip because he's gotten one in his first two career wins, getting up to 10 furlongs in just his third career start in such a short period of time. There's a lot of questions, a lot of ifs we have to ask, but we know there's a lot of talent in Taba, and that's what I'm most excited to see. He's, he's a very talented horse, and it seems like he could either win or run last with a terrible trip, and it's hard to figure out which one it'll be, and it'll be fun to break that down in the coming weeks to come, but he's a talented horse. People have compared him to Justify. That's not crazy to think, but we also don't know that for sure. He could also be a rocky world like from last year, who had so much hype in the Derby, was one of the favorites, could have been the favorite if uh, Central Quality took a few less dollars for Mattress Mac. And uh, we all know how Rocky World's Derby went. It could be the same for Taba. It's going to be interesting. It's stressful, exciting. I don't know the right word to use, but, but Taba is certainly one you can't ignore as we head to the Kentucky Derby. Now moving on to number three, that'll be the Wood Memorial winner, Mo Donegal. He's, he's been good. He's He's been consistent. Uh, if you listen to our, our regular content on the podcast side, you know I think he's ran two, now three straight winning races after taking out the Wood Memorial. Of course, his win in the Remsen was very impressive. Followed that up with a Holy Bowl where he ran as good as he could given the circumstances, and now a great win in the Wood Memorial. But you had to love his ability to close into a slow pace at Aqueduct just this last weekend, uh, picking it up when early voting looked like he might be able to steal it on the front end. Bo Donegal, I called, I, I tweeted it's, it's crazy to see a three-year-old that has this just innate will to win because it's you, he's had so many circumstances play against him in multiple races, and he still overcomes and gets the job done. It's very admirable. That's certainly a quality you want on a horse heading into the Kentucky Derby. Uh, I think the biggest question will be the kind of trip he gets because he's a deeper, deeper, far from behind closing type, and that hasn't always been favorable in the Derby the last two years, and certainly you're more likely to find trouble that way. So... That, that is the biggest negative on his front. But he has the right connections for this. He has the talent to do it. Once again, not one you can ignore. You just have to worry about the trip. And now we're going to move on and talk about uh, the runner-up from one of Mo Donegal's races, and that is Zandon, uh, the winner of the Bluegrass Stakes. Uh, if you were if you were with me and you were on Zandon in the Remsen, then you might have thought that Mo Donegal should have come down there, but we're not going to get into to that, that decision in the Remsen. Uh, but we got to talk about this race that uh, Zandon just ran in the Bluegrass. This is a spectacular race for the horse to go into a situation where Emmanuel kind of tripped out in this race. Emmanuel looked really strong off the turn, and uh, Smile Happy eventually came to get him uh, in there, but Zandon had to work through traffic, and this is where Flavian Pratt gets the credit uh, because he didn't make the decision that some other jockeys would have to take the horse 1,700 wide uh, going into the far turn and get the horse beat second uh, in the bluegrass. Instead, he waited for the hole to open up. The hole opened up, and the horse won the race going away. You know, it, it, Mitch, it Kurt Becker said it's over by the time that he had overhauled Smile Happy, and uh, Zanin wound up going on to win by two and a half lengths there. Very, very impressive victory for him. Uh, and this is a horse who, it, 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 rather light on experience, but every, every one of his races has been really good. He's run up against some of the best three-year-olds. Uh, and Eric and I were talking about this before the race. Or, or, I'm sorry, before we started recording this. And Eric was talking about how it, it's important to have a, a three-year-old get punched in the mouth uh, before the Kentucky Derby. Uh, speaking uh, facetiously with that, of course, but uh, it, it's important for that to, to happen with a horse that everything doesn't go their way so that they, they have that test in adversity that they have to overcome. And, and Zandon's had to do that in his three stakes victories. Obviously, the Bluegrass or trip didn't work out for him. The Risen Star Epicenter kind of tripped out on both him and Smile Happy and you know, he epicenter or, or excuse me, Zandon was coming from farther behind than Smile Happy was. So that's why he finished behind Smile Happy there. But uh, I, th I think he's a better, you know, the Bluegrass obviously proved that. But I think if they were coming from the same spot, Zandon and Smile Happy, Zandon finishes in front of uh, Smile Happy there. And then I already mentioned what happened with him in the Remsen. So, you know, that the, the point being is, you know, that this is a horse who's really good. Uh, and the other thing about him is that he's gone the nine furlongs, three straight starts. So 
you know that he's going to have no problem when you get out to the mile and a quarter of the Kentucky Derby. He is one that is definitely going to be on a lot of people's lists and absolutely should be because he's coming out of three really, really strong efforts. And now we're going to move on to the number one horse on this list. I referenced him last time. It's Epicenter, the likely favorite for the Kentucky Derby. The, you know, right now he is the favorite, uh, probably will be the morning line and like the likely post-time favorite for the Kentucky Derby. His wins have been very good. Uh, I, you know, I just got done praising Zandon. We've said some good things about Smile Happy. He beat them both in the Risen Star. Uh, you know, we can talk about the the trip that he got in the Risen Star when it comes time to his uh, Kentucky Derby profile and, you know, whether or not that might be a negative with him going into the Kentucky Derby. Point being is that he was able to win the race. And what's ruled at the Kentucky Derby as of late? Speed. And that's what he has. Louisiana Derby, he... Was, you know, not that this wasn't something that we hadn't seen from him already before, but he did show that you know, did show once again that he had that element of he doesn't have to be up there on the lead. He rated off the pace, sat behind a couple of leaders, ran by them, won the race impressively. The the big gl glaring red flag with him is the, the LeCompte, but that's something that can be addressed at another day. Point being is this horse in three or four races has won stakes races by open links is victory in the Gunrunner stakes it was also a very good effort. Uh, and you know, just the, the thing with, with epicenter is he, he's just been getting better this entire, uh, Kentucky Derby trail. Now, does that make him the guaranteed winner? Not necessarily. There are other good horses on in this crop, but he's the, the deserving favorite right now. He just blew two of the, the more highly touted horses, or I shouldn't say just blew two back. He blew two of the more highly touted horses on the Derby trail out of the water in the risen star right now. And the other thing is, is that I referenced it a little bit with Zandon. He's coming out of the Louisiana Derby. Last year, when the Louisiana Derby was run for the first time at a mile and in three sixteenths, as a prep for the Kentucky Derby, the horses that ran in it fared very well. And I think that having that experience at the distance already for Epicenter is going to do him a lot of wonders come Derby time. It's going to be a fun Derby. We're going to have our Kentucky Derby profiles coming out over the course of the next couple of weeks. Epicenter is going to be the first one that may be out uh, before the weekend, but it will definitely be out by the beginning of this weekend. So keep an eye out for that. We're going to do all 20 horses. Uh, this is our Kentucky Derby Power 5, uh, and there will be no shortage of Kentucky Derby content on Racing Run going forward. Uh, have a good one. We'll see you next time. 